Yeah, it is a little weird. Today, I'm gonna do another video on the Baofang UV5R radio. This radio used to be my favorite. It is no longer my favorite radio. My favorite radio is now the Ocean, Ocean, Wuxin, KG935G. But dollar for dollar, the Baofang UV5R is still the best radio you can buy in the world, dollar for dollar. For $30, it would be difficult to find a radio that is better than this. Just ask any ham radio operator. Mine has the larger, bigger, and longer extended battery because it makes it look more tactical. And we all know that bigger is better. I'm going to show you how to program your Baofang UV5R to work as an emergency NOAA weather channel scanner. And I'm going to explain it in a way that even you can understand step by step. And more importantly, I will do it in a way that will not cause boredom seizures or worse, bore you to death. As with many things in life, there are many ways to do what I'm going to do. There is no right way or wrong way. I'm going to show you the way that I do it. So if anyone out there does it differently, there's no need to leave a comment to tell me that I'm doing it wrong. There is no wrong. There is only different. Now, in case you don't know what a NOAA channel is, allow me to explain. NOAA channels, also known as the weather channels, not from the weather channel, but the NOAA channels are known as weather channels because they broadcast mostly weather information. They broadcast all across the country. There's transmitters located everywhere. So just about every geographic region is covered with specific information for that area. There are seven NOAA channels and they're standardized across the entire country of the United States. And 24 hours a day, they broadcast updated weather information, weather alerts, tornado warnings, all the weather information that you need to know. But what many people do not know is that the NOAA channels also transmit after event information. If there's a large hurricane in your area or tornado, the weather channel, the NOAA channel for that area that you're in will transmit updates so that you can get updates on whatever's happening, tornadoes, hurricanes, even earthquakes. If there's a major event, the NOAA channels are where you want to go for information. All you need to do is put all seven of the NOAA frequencies in your radio, in your UV5R, and then you can just scan through them. And anytime there's a broadcast, it will stop and play it. Or you just need to find the one or two NOAA frequencies that are specific to your area and either listen to that one frequency or scan through if there's more than one for your area. Where I live, there's actually two transmitters that kind of overlap. So I program two into my radios and I can scan just those two channels and I will always have the latest emergency and weather information at my disposal. So the first thing you need to know is the NOAA frequencies, either all seven of them or the ones specific to your area. To make this easy, the FCC has a website with all the frequencies and the areas state by state that they cover. I will put a link to that in the information section below. So once you have those frequencies or just that one frequency, you can put it in your radio for scanning or for storing for later review. Now, as I'm sure some of the geniuses or know-it-alls will point out in the comment section, you could just scan through the entire frequency range using your UV5R. But the UV5R scanning is limited, at least on my older versions. It doesn't allow you to scan from a range from here to here. If you start scanning the frequencies, it's gonna start here and it's just gonna go on forever, which can take a while and then start over at the beginning. What I'm gonna show you how to do is to store the frequencies as channels and then scan through just those two, three, four, five, or seven channels, which will go through very quickly. So you will never miss an emergency weather alert. So now that you understand what the weather channels are, you're now a certified NOAA channel expert, YouTube certified. NOAA channel expert. I'll show you how to get those frequencies into your UV5R and then scan through them. So I know what the frequencies are for my area. I have two, two frequencies that I'm gonna put in. You can do just one, you can do all seven. For my area, there's two. So I'm gonna use those two as the example. But first, let's do a little run through of the Baofang UV5R and similar radios so that you understand what all these buttons are for and what they do. The Baofang UV5R operates in two modes what's called channel mode and what is called VFO mode. Channel mode, as you might have guessed, is for channels. VFO stands for something, but it means direct frequency mode. So channel mode, you get channels that you store 
and you can scroll through. VFO mode is just frequencies that you either punch in directly or scan through. To switch between the two modes, you use the VFO MR button. Right now, I'm in channel mode, and there's nothing directly that tells me that I'm in channel mode, but I can tell that I am because I can see channel numbers listed over here. The Baofeng UV5R is a dual mode radio, dual scanning radio. So there are two channels that you can listen to at the same time. Right now, this radio happens to be set on the same frequency or the same channel. You'll also notice that there's a little up arrow right here, a little carrot, a little cursor. And that indicates what channel is active, meaning if I were to press a button or press the channel change button, it would affect this line. The lower line would be unaffected. So now that you know the frequencies that you want to enter from the NOAA website, you just need to put them into the radio, save it as a channel, and then scan through it. So we're in channel mode now, and I know that because I see the number one there. So I'm going to switch to VFO MR mode. VFO stands for something. And I'm just going to enter the frequency in. One, six, two, five, hundred. And now I'm listening on one, six, two, five, hundred. I'm still in VFO mode because there's no channels listed here. So the next step is to save this frequency in as a channel. And that is a three-step process. Step one, pick what channel number you want to save it as. In this case, I'm going to save this in channel slot number one. Channel numbers can be anything you want. It's your radio, your choice. So I've decided I'm going to put this frequency in channel slot one. I first need to delete what's in that channel slot and then save it. It's all very simple. So now that I have entered that frequency in and I'm on the upper line here, meaning we're dealing with this frequency because the little cursor is there, I'm going to go into menu by pressing menu and I'm going to go up to the channel options. It's a lot of options. I'm just pressing the up arrow button. First thing I'm going to do is delete the channel that I want to save this on. So I go to the delete channel option. You see this little number blinking there. That means it's option, menu option number 28. I hit menu again to select it. I've now selected menu option 28 to delete channel. By default, it wants me to delete channel zero. I want to delete channel one. So I use the up and down arrow. So now it's asking me to confirm that I want to delete channel one. If I wanted to delete channel two, I would just hit the up arrow again, but I want to delete channel one. I've got that selected and just press menu again. Channel one has now been cleared and you can tell that it's been cleared because instead of the CH01, like it showed before, it just shows 01. The cursor has come back up to the top, meaning that I can now scroll through the menu options again. So I'm going to go backwards to number 27. So I hit the down arrow button. It's not very self-explanatory, but mem ch, mem channel, means this is how you store a channel. So I'm going to select that. My cursor is now down here so that I can scroll through and choose the memory channel that I want to save it in. Memory channel one, I hit menu again, and the little ch is back, meaning that a frequency has been assigned to channel one. I can hit exit or just wait for a few seconds. I'm now back at my main screen, but I'm still in VFO mode. And we know that because there's no little channel numbers there. VFO mode stands for something. So I'm going to go from VFO mode to channel mode by pressing the big orange button. And you'll see now that my frequency 162500 is stored on channel one. The second line, channel zero, is still whatever random frequency I had there. That is a GMRS frequency that I use for receiving and listening only on this radio. Now I'm going to store the second frequency in a channel because for my area, there's only two frequencies that I need to listen to. Your area may be different. I'm going to go through it faster this time so you can follow along. So I can see that I am in channel mode because I have channel listings over here, which means I need to switch to VFO mode to directly enter the frequency. VFO stands for, I don't fuck. I switch back to VFO mode. The top frequency is the same because that was the last one I plugged in. We still have my random frequency at the bottom. No channel numbers here. This is how I know that I'm in VFO mode. The second frequency that I want to put in is 162450. So I'm just going to punch it in right on top of what's there. 162450. Extended forecast for the Riverside County Mountains. And that's actually being broadcast right now, and it's so strong that I don't even have an antenna. Miles an hour. Gusts at 25 miles an hour. 
and it's still receiving. And that's because the transmitter is so close to me because it's for my area. So I've put in my second frequency. I now need to store that. I have decided I want to store it in channel slot number two. So I'm going to go back into the menu. The first thing I want to do is clear channel two. So it came back to the last menu option I was on. I want to go back up to menu option number 28, which is delete channel. I'm going to hit menu again to select that menu option. And I'm going to scroll up to channel two and delete it just in case there was anything there. I actually know there wasn't because the CH isn't there. Remember, if something is stored there, it will say CH2 or a name if you've given it a name. I'm going to delete it just for fun to be sure by hitting menu again. Channel number two is now deleted. When I hit menu, it brought me up to the top line with the flashing menu option number. I can now use my down arrow key to come back to the add channel menu option, which is mem channel number 27. I'm going to hit menu again. So I've selected that menu option and now I can scroll through as it's telling me the little cursor is there to select my channel number. I want to store it on memory channel two, which I know is empty because there's nothing. It doesn't say CH or anything there. I hit menu again. I now have memory slot two is now stored and you see that that little CH came right back up and now hit exit back on the home screen. No channel numbers there, meaning I am in VFO mode. VFO stands for something. So I'm going to press the big orange button again to go from VFO mode to memory or channel mode. And I'm now on channel two. Lucerne Valleys. Tuesday, sunny. My little cursor is flashing up here, indicating that anything I do is going to take effect on the upper line. This frequency is still active, but nothing's going on there. We don't care about that lower frequency. This indicates that I'm on channel two, that little number two. So if I go down one by hitting the down arrow button, I'm now on channel one. 162500 was my first channel. Nothing's being broadcast there. I can hit the up arrow key again. Just to 30 miles an hour in the afternoon. And channel number two is now set for that. So I have successfully saved two NOAA emergency channels on my radio. To scan through them is now even simpler. So now that I'm in channel mode, I have two channels stored. I could see if I have more channels stored just by going up one. So there's a channel 127 stored, which I don't care about. I'm not going to bother deleting it. That might be a default channel. It may not let you delete it. I don't remember. I don't care. Channel zero is also, I believe, a default channel. It may not let you delete that. What happens if you tried to delete it? If I hit menu, go to delete channel, channel zero, menu to select it. You can never delete channel zero. Channel one is still set at 162500. Channel two. Highs around 93 through the past 98 to 100. It's going to be hot today. Channel two is my other NOAA frequency. Now to scan through them, the UV5R only has a scan everything option. So if I'm in channel mode and I hit the scan option, it's going to scan through all the channels. So I've got channel one, I've got channel two, which I just set up, and those two default channels one and uh, zero and 127. It's going to scan through those two. There might be a way to take them out. I don't know. I don't really care. It's a $26 radio. Who cares? So to scan, make sure you're in channel mode. If you're in frequency mode, it's going to scan through all the frequencies starting wherever I am. I don't want to do that. I want to scan through my channels only. So I go back to channel mode as indicated by the little channel numbers there. And I press and hold the star key. You can see there's little blue letters there that say scan. Press and hold that for a second or two. It will now scan through all the channels that I've saved. When it hears a transmission, it will stop and let me listen and then continue on scanning. And that is how you scan through your emergency frequencies. I told you I would make it simple. And if you're still watching, then you were not bored to death and you probably didn't have a boredom seizure although you may have and not known it. It may look complicated. It can be a little confusing the first time you get into the menu settings because they are confusing. But after you've done it a few times, it will slowly start to sink in and you'll get it. But if you have questions about how to do what I just showed you or if I missed something or something isn't clear, leave a comment below. I will do my best to answer it. If I'm not able to answer it, someone else will come along and they will try to answer it. Bear in mind that most people that leave comments on YouTube channels are morons 
and they will probably get it wrong. Dickhead comments. People being smart asses. It's my job to be a smart ass here, not their job. Those comments will be pinned to the top for everybody to enjoy and laugh at and make fun of. If you have a specific question about